guys, Ralph here. True Power Trumpet Fitness, and welcome to Terrific, Terrific Tuesday. Anyway, you saw the uh, you saw the thumbnail. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> it's not Armageddon, but uh, yeah, a bit of an end of an era. Yeah, I'll explain in a minute. I have played a little bit today, so uh, we'll see what we got. Feeling good. That's after about 45 minutes of practice, a shower, and uh, hellacious double C's. And I love that little lyrical thing in the middle of um, characteristics, um, characteristics study number seven. So uh, we're back to, uh, it's been a while, but we're back to double C's in Arvin. Anyway, you saw the uh, thumbnail. Now here's the deal. This is, uh, this is a little weird in that Canstel, the company that makes Jerry's trumpets, is going out of business. There are going to be no more Callet trumpets. Kyle Schmier, the guy that's doing the uh, taking care of the business for him, has four soloists left and two simmers. Guys, if money is not an option, grab them. Guys, you know I'm pro Jerry and all this sort of stuff, and maybe a little bit biased, but these are the most extraordinary trumpets that have ever been made. And if you don't have one, you owe it to yourself to get one. If money is an issue, go on the internet, Amazon, whatever, and see if you can get a used one. Okay, guys, this is it. Now, another thing to think about. If you have one, like I do, take care of it. If it needs, you know, make sure you clean it. If it needs new, you know, water keys or something, be very, very careful about the craftsman that you bring it to, the repairman. Be very, very careful. And treat it like the collector's item that it is. And guys, please, please, please don't do something silly. I know a lot of you guys like to, you know, experiment with different leader pipes and, and bells and all this sort of stuff. Don't do it. Just leave this. It, it's perfect the way it is. Unless you get a used one and it's been dropped or something like that, guys, it is the most perfect pitch, the most beautiful tone you are ever going to play. Okay? So, that's that. If money's not an issue, I'm telling you, turn off the video now and get in touch with Kyle. If money is an issue, keep in the time to come, keep your eyes out for used stuff because it is wonderful. Now, as you know, I um, I played the Sima. I had one of the first, first Simmas that came out, okay? And I played that for seven years, and I was expecting to play it for the next 60 years. I was completely thrilled with that trumpet. Now, here's the deal. Whenever I would go on a, a show or something with Jerry, he wanted me to play the soloist, which is the newer model. Okay? So I would do this, and I would have these go on these shows. It's, geez, my chops feel great. 
I'm so lucky to have it just catch this this awesome day where you know in, while I'm playing at the show. This is this is terrific. And then I go back, and I, as you know, when Jerry's health failed, he gave me his soloist trumpet, and I played one note on that soloist trumpet. That's why I had such great days at the shows. The trumpet is off the charts. As great as the Sima was, and I again, if I never bought a Sima, I played a year, a year and a half of these videos. And you you, you saw the, the results of the Sima. But the soloist was crazy. Okay? Now these are really, really works of art from somebody, you know, everybody talks about his chops and all this sort of stuff. But he had a long history, a long history of working in the field of trumpet making, mouthpieces too. You know, he originally went to work for uh, Eldon Bell, Benj, back in 1953. Benj was the former principal trumpet of the Chicago Symphony before, you know, Herseth and all our guys. And he went as a salesman. And then he went to uh, Colicchio and as a salesman, and did pretty much the same thing. But along the way, um, he, uh, very good friends with Belge, Benj and Dominic Colicchio, and he learned a lot. Again, this superior brain of his, he learned a lot about manufacturing trumpets and whatnot. Now, um, back in the 80s, he approached Donald Getson, now that's uh, the original Getson's son, to make his own original offering. And I told you just the other day, and this is before I knew that about there were no trumpets left, that C trumpet, most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Most beautiful tr C trumpet I've ever played, okay? And the original offering of trumpets was actually from Getson, okay? Um, actually made from Getson. Believe it or not, he sold 350 of his B-flat trumpets the first year, outselling, you know, remember the uh, MF horn and all this sort of stuff, his first year. Now, they were five, $600. He wanted to get a free-blowing, centered, pure trumpet for minimal cost to get himself into, into the market. And that he absolutely did, and I told you. I could never, never part with that C trumpet. Okay, now, uh, uh, after Getson, he went to uh, Canstall. Now, once again, uh, he could have gone with other companies, okay? But Canstall was the one guy that would make things to his specifications. So if he went to, you know, LeBlanc or something like that, they wouldn't work with him. Basically, they just you know, pump out their big pile of crap, same pile of crap, and put his name on it, which would, number one, defeat the purpose, and number two, <laughs> is not ethical. And if, if you know Jerry, if, I mean, he's the most ethical person on the planet. Okay? Now, uh, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that he um, uh, had such great results with these trumpets, he was heavily into the bell. He thought of all the, the things that are so important, and everything's so important, but he, he was very, very concerned with the bell, okay? And all his trumpets, for the most part, are one and a half inches forward. If you remember some of the um, Louis Armstrong and Harry James thing, it's, the bell would be, you know, three, even farther forward, and he couldn't, uh, he couldn't get somebody to, to do that for him, so he put it as far forward as again, and that is one of the reasons that we get such projection and everything from these um, from these trumpets. Now, Canstall was making, his first one out was the soloist. Okay, now there was two solos. There was a soloist and a New York soloist. And guys, I had all of these at one time. And when the next thing would come out, I'd sell the other one, take the money, and, and you know, uh, get the new one. Then came the jazz. I played that for a long time. I played that for a long time. Now, I don't know if you know this, but the jazz, even though it got a very, very dark, rich sound with a conical bell that he was into at that time. The, the bell was the thing. The bell was the thing for him. The conical bell. It did get a very dark, rich sound, but he couldn't, because of the name, he couldn't get a symphony player to even go in the same room with it. 
oh, I don't want to play a jazz trumpet, right? And he said, no, 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 just listen. No, no, no. Wouldn't do it. Took the same trumpet and put symphonique on it. <laughs> he started, that's the jazz and the symphonique are the exact same trumpet. Okay. There was a super chops trumpet after that. I don't think I got one. I think I went right from jazz to the uh, to the sima. I'm not sure. Anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So I might have leapfrogged the super chops. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Jerry. He would know. He remembers everything. Then about eight years ago, sima, and I got one of the first offerings. I, I got one of the first trumpets. Actually, that was actually Jerry's trumpet. Then that was his first sima. He gave it to me, and then he played another one. So eight, seven years later, I'm playing the Sima. Loved it. Loved it. And I, uh, when I got, when he gave me his New York soloist, I told you, when he was, his health went, when I got, I didn't want, as much as I didn't want to, you know, uh, get rid of the Sima, the thoughts of this wonderful trumpet, just sitting in my basement gathering dust. I, I, I couldn't think of that. So I had a student at the time, and I won't use his name, a student at the time, because I still have him, who was thrilled to get the Sima. And I'm going to give him a lesson on Friday. I'm going to tell him, take care of it. And if for any reason, if for any reason, he doesn't want to play it anymore, just sell it back to me. Okay, I, I, I want that trumpet back if he's not going to use it. Now, I love the fact that he's using it, don't get me wrong, but um, that's that. So anyway, an end of an era, you bet. You bet. Um, beg, borrow, steal. Now, I said millions of times, the mouthpiece is the thing. And as long as you have the 1SS, the 1SB, or the 1SC, or all combination, all three, or all three, you're good. Now, the combination of those mouthpieces with the trumpets are unparalleled. And that is a collector's item that you're, you're not going to get again. They're done. They're done. So I, I don't want to sound like doom and gloom. That's, that's not because he's not upset in the least. It's just the way things are going. But keep your eyes out. Sima and the New York soloists are the best trumpets ever made. Case closed. Anyway, that's that. We'll talk again tomorrow. Eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power.